Hello, my name is Tim Long. I was a writer at The Late Show between 1995 and 1998, and I was also the head writer for one year. I was insanely devoted to the old show. I grew up in small town Canada, but we were within the broadcast area of Detroit, and the Detroit NBC affiliate showed the old late night a half hour later. So on school nights, I'd be up at 1.45 watching Dave interview like Brother Theodore, and then I would go to school groggy the next day. Camping with Barry White was the strangest thing in the world, and it made me realize just the way that the show could turn silly throwaway concepts into real things. It's my understanding that somebody on the staff just said camping with Barry White. That actually came about because I just wanted to make him laugh one time. So he said, um, so what'd you do over the break? And I, I said, well, you're not gonna you're not gonna like this, but I went camping with Barry White. I found out today that a member of our staff once went camping with Barry White. Uh, I know, it stunned me too. Uh. Four days later, there's a tent on the stage and there's Barry White. It just felt like this show is really hitting me right in the, in the pleasure center of my brain. Funny little thing. Ouch. Barry White has mm. just been bitten by a northern copperhead. What you've seen here, fortunately, is only a dramatization. But if you were camping with Barry White and something like this happened, would you know what to do? Suction the venom out of the wound. There you are. Now, after that, get Barry White to a doctor immediately. Please. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking... There were a number of pieces that were featured in this thing called Late Night the Book. It was a PSA about how you should never give up on television. One of Dave's great insistences was that he was not an actor. But then when you got him to act, it was like, Dave could have done this. And there's a moment in that video where he gets really angry at the kid where you can feel the heat. <laughs> This cancel business, it, it can never happen to Voyagers, could it? Yes, Jimmy. And I'm afraid it has. Jimmy! Jimmy! It was different. It was really special. I don't think I'll ever watch TV again. Jimmy, don't ever say that. Not even as a joke. There was this piece, I think, late in the run of the NBC show called The Strong Guy, The Fat Guy, and The Genius. Rewatching it, the genius is the weak link. Because <laughs> he's, he's not really solving anything. He just spouts facts that you can get off the internet. It's so delightful and just makes everything else on TV look stupid. Can you break that clock? Do you have something for the uh, fat guy to eat? Head of lettuce? A head of lettuce? Mm. Yeah, what's the properties of an isosceles triangle? It's got two sides that are equal. A chair, he'll break it. A pear, he'll eat it. A square, he'll calculate the size. 16 times 12 would be, let's see, 160, 192. Mr. Strong Guy, Mr. Fat Guy, Mr. Genius. Your three modern heroes in disguise. My first joke ever was a setup to the top 10 list where Dave said, oh, we don't have a top 10 list, and he ran out into the back, and there was a vending machine that said top 10 list. I just remember thinking, this is amazing. I just thought up that stupid joke, and then they made up that vending machine. Uh, I don't seem to have the uh, copy of the uh, list. Oh, right here. There we go, let's just see. Is it in there? All right, that one. Okay, let's try that one. Okay, let's try that one. Okay, is that cop still here? Can I borrow your gun, officer? Okay, let's try that one. All right, let's just turn the son of a bitch over. I got sent to Miami to oversee a project called Will You Eat the Key Lime Pie? We would place a key lime pie on a payphone and then Dave would call the payphone, and whoever picked up, Dave would ask the eponymous question, will you eat the key lime pie? So I had to hold the payphone until the last possible second. So I was on the payphone, and Jessica Santini in the control room was talking to me, but she didn't seem to clock that Dave wanted me to get off the phone. And then I hear in the background, really faintly, for the love of God, Tim, get off the phone! <laughs> and it's Dave. I put together to my horror 
that Dave has been yelling at me on camera for about a minute. It all went fine. Someone picked up and someone ate the pie. To this day, I don't know whether that was edited out because I just couldn't bring myself to watch it. Thank God. Well, look at the lovely pastel green and pink there on the uh, outside of that building. Hi, it's me, Dave Letterman. Eat the key oh. lime pie. Hey, 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 hey. What's your name? Hello. Hi, hi, it's me, Dave Letterman. What's your name? Carlos Pie. Hey, good, Carlos. Do me a favor. Do you like key lime pie? Yeah, I do. Okay, there's some right behind you on top of the phone there. Ah. Uh -huh. There you go. It. Spotted it right away. Excellent piece of detective work. And wow. now, Carlos, I have to ask you one question. Yeah. Will you eat the key lime pie? If I'll eat it? Yes. Of course. All right. <laughs> Yeah, oh sure, by all means, get the linen. Get the linen in place. Okay. Okay. Can you hurry it up? Rosie O'Donnell is great tonight. Oh uh, yeah, what do you want me to eat it? Yeah, just eat it, eat it, eat it. Come on. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah! My first month at the show, I was good at some things. I think I wrote good jokes, I wrote good segment material, but I, I didn't have a handle on remotes. I think the idea I pitched was, Dave takes 20 staffers downtown to get a tattoo. And I remember Tonic saying, you've seen television, right? I'm not sure we have a lens wide enough for 20 people. But they sort of zeroed in on Zoe. So I edited the piece together. Somebody said, well, you gotta put music on this. And I didn't understand how music clearance worked. And so I put like seven big pop songs in it. I found out later that it was one of the most expensive segments we'd ever done, because I didn't know that you had to pay those people. Just take the edge off. Thanks. Go ahead and finish it up. This is sort of like what we did when mom wanted her mustache removed. <laughs> the same kind of deal. We had to get her full of malt liquor too. <laughs> Do you draw, do you paint, yeah, do you I sketch? draw, I paint, yeah. I sketch, I figure skate, I do it all. <laughs> <laughs> what was funny about like going out with him on remotes, there was sort of this ritual where you had to have a lot of stuff prepared. Like, especially early on, I would just like write and write and write and I'd have like, you try to war game every scenario in a remote and then the camera would roll and he would just go off on his own crazy tangent. That was kind of how I remember Dave the Happiest, like kind of engineering situations where Rupert G came very, very close to getting murdered. Would you like some fresh ground pepper? Would you like some fresh ground pepper? Let me, let me put a little fresh ground pepper on that bread. Let me bread put a little fresh ground pepper on no, the bread. No, would you stop it? I'm serious. <laughs> What's the problem? What's the problem? It's a condiment. You're, this is a condiment. You're aggravating it... the hell out of me. Oh, I don't want pepper on my bread, okay? I said no. Where would you well, like well, the pepper? Where, where would you like the pepper? I don't want any right now. All right, how about your friend? How about your friend? I want you to get out of my face. I want another waiter. What, wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait well, a minute. Who are you, Martha Stewart? Who are you, Martha Stewart? Carry it over there by the rim. By the rim. Oh, by the rim? Yeah, just with your thumb down in it. Yeah. Get it down in there. Just get it all the way in. Is it in the water? Yeah. Okay. There you go. No, I Thank don't want you. To take that back. Just, just take it back. What's okay? the problem what's now? The, what's the problem now? Put your finger in my glass. Just get out of here, okay? Well, who, yeah. you're, who are you, the Queen of England? Well, who are you, the Queen of England? I, I, I guess I am, but I don't want your finger in my glass, okay? So get out of my face. It was my thumb. It, it was my thumb. <laughs> your thumb, your finger, whatever. Get, I don't want it. Do you mind? Can I have a seat? Away from the table, okay? <laughs> Touch me, die. Go away. <laughs> Go away. My, what a lovely attitude. Go away. My, what a lovely attitude. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. When you're at the Letterman show, you become sort of a, a gorilla of comedy. Like you, you examine the entire landscape of the show and you think, how can I slip some comedy in there? There's this little song that precedes every top 10 list. What if we change the nature of that song? And what if we made it into a love ballad? One of the great pleasures of working at The Late Show is that you could come up with an idea and then it would be on the air that day. So I handed this thing in, the amazing production staff, um, Jill Lederman and Nancy Agostini would go to work. And by two o'clock that afternoon, you got like a world-class male Broadway singer, a world-class female Broadway singer, and a children's choir. It was just thrilling. Those are memories I'll never lose. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy The Late Show Top 10 Love Ballad. Oh, this will be good. Love, a feeling both human and divine. 
Captured our hearts and made us one. The top ten list, a ten step journey on the road to talk show fun. Top ten love ballad, we sing it cause we hold the list so dear. Like our delicious salad, the list has many parts, some we love. One of the amazing things about working at The Late Show, especially when you're a kid from nowhere, is that you suddenly realize you're in this bizarro celebrity netherworld. And the best example of that is a story that doesn't really involve me, and a lot of it's secondhand, and I probably shouldn't tell, but screw it. One of the amazing things about Dave is that he's one of the very few people on the planet who can act natural on camera and just say whatever he wants to say. At first, you know, they were kind of like a new couple. And they who, who's they? Mira and Quentin. Mira, Mira and Quentin. Quentin Tarantino? Mira and Quentin Tarantino. Is her boyfriend. No. Okay. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, man. I Why? find that, well, it's just a little discouraging. <laughs> I mean, all, all, all geniusness aside, but he's kind of geeky, the guy, right? No. A, a, just a little? No. <laughs> <laughs> the he, guy who did Reservoir Dogs? No. He, I mean, yeah, undeniably that. He can do, write films and direct, but, you know, when you get right down to it, he's just a little dweeby, isn't he? <laughs> I believe Dave got a call like later that day or the next day, and Dave, it's Quentin Tarantino on line one. Apparently Quentin Tarantino said something like, I'm gonna kick your ass. You made fun of me for dating Mira Sorvino. You, like there was something wrong with it. And Dave apparently said, but yeah, it, there is something wrong with it <laughs> because she's her and you're you. Once he sort of put together what was happening, Dave said, I am going to, uh, we will arrange for you first class airfare for you to fly to New York and we will get you a very nice suite at the hotel of your choice and you can come over and kick my ass. And he was like, good. Thankfully, Quentin Tarantino didn't take him up on it. A couple of months later, Quentin was on the show. So Dave wisely was like, okay, I guess I gotta go talk to him. We should probably clear the air before the segment. And so Dave goes up and then there was a very, it was a long time they were in there. We're like, what's going on? And then Dave came out and he did this really funny thing where he pretended to hold his eye like he'd been beaten up by Quentin, but what an odd thing to have happen. <laughs> My first trip to LA was to come with Dave and a crew to shoot a bunch of remotes. And so we did a segment called Fun in a Car where it was exactly that. Dave drove around, we went to a muffler shop and just put Dave's car up on a jack and slowly lowered it onto like all sorts of things to be crushed. And I remember we put that together with the song Fun 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 by the Beach Boys and it just turns into this missile of comedy. And it was so much fun. So again, great experience. I'd like 1,200 tacos. We're gonna turn the car into a taco mobile. How many? Seen a guy drink motor oil? Mm. It's one of those candid camera things. Look, come here, come here. There we go. I'm Alan Funt Jr. Hey, wave to the truck. Help yourself to the complimentary tacos. I filled my car with tacos and I've gone nuts. You know how some people wake up and say, I didn't study for the exam. I still wake up sometimes and think, we don't have an act one. Like it's just something that sticks with you forever. <laughs> <laughs>